Are you sick and tired of waiting six to 12 months just for a chance to buy a high-end coffee grinder? And are you potentially looking for something that could even outperform those grinders you have to wait forever for? Well, today I have a solution for you and that is called run a commercial grinder at home. Today I'm gonna to be talking about why I think a commercial grinder might actually be a fairly compelling choice for those of you who are looking for your next coffee grinder upgrade. And of course, I'm going to be talking about all of the downsides of doing something like this. And I'll also be touching upon my brief usage experience of the Didding Lab Suite at home. So let me now go over all of the benefits of running a commercial grinder at home. The very first thing I want you to consider, or if you haven't been aware of, is commercial grinders, generally speaking, are all large flat bird grinders. And these are grinders that actually can use the same exact burrs as those high-end enthusiast grinders that you have to wait forever for. In fact, the appeal of those high-end enthusiast grinders at home is the fact that you can use some of these larger burr sets that you find in these commercial grinders, but in a much smaller form factor. The thing is, is if you're using the same burr set in a high-end commercial grinder as a high-end single dosing enthusiast, enthusiast grinder, your results are probably going to be fairly similar in the sense that they're all going to be very good. As you get deeper in the hobby of coffee or espresso, for example, you'll find out that a lot of enthusiasts or a lot of guys who are deep in the game will really be chasing different burr sets rather than grinders, really. It's what type of burr set do you like? What type of properties of those burr sets do you like? And ultimately speaking, what types of grinders can fit all of those types of burrs or what types of grinders already have those burrs. So if you're using the same burr set in a commercial grinder, grinder versus a high-end single dosing enthusiast grinder, your results should probably be fairly similar. My next point is related to grind speed. Now you may be saying, well, grind speed at home doesn't really matter because we're at home and we're not trying to serve multiple drinks after drink. But turns out, at least in my experience, I actually really like the faster grind speed offered by a grinder like this Lab Suite here, where I can grind 18 to 20 grams in, in literally two to three seconds. Of course, we'll also be talking about the downsides of grinding really fast. But the other thing too it, with these commercial grinders is the fact that there is actually a hopper. So this is a really probably not super big deal for most of you guys, but I'm finding that it is nice to actually be able to have the ability to batch brew. So say I'm trying to grind maybe over 60 grams of coffee for a filter, French press, or cold brew, I can kind of just toss it in here. Whereas with a high-end single dosing grinder like a monolith or a niche, I have to kind of just put in 40 grams and it's not as smooth as I'd like it to be. And also this grinds much faster. So another actual really legitimate reason why you should consider a commercial grinder is the fact that it is commercial. So everything in here is built to last. It's really built to be abused and used for thousands of pounds of coffee. Now, the difference between uh, the build quality of something like a Lab Suite or an EK is really the touch. Like, how does it feel to touch the items? These don't really feel as nice, in my opinion, compared to those high-end single dosing enthusiast grinders, where it's that it's more commercial rather than craftsmanship. Although I would argue both of them are at the same level of build quality. Another thing to quickly note is the way you get coffee out of these grinders. So a grinder like the Eureka Olympus 75E, you have to actually stick a portafilter and turn on a button to grind. Grinders like the EK and Lab Suite here, for example, have a grind snocker. These are things that you might actually really like, uh, but you won't really find them in some of those enthusiast grinders out there. Another small thing to note with commercial grinders versus uh, home grinders is actually a lot of home grinders in the super high-end enthusiast space are more actually geared towards espresso. So grinders like the Lab Suite here, EK43, depending on how you calibrate it, can actually offer you a much more flexible range between uh, pour over and espresso. So what I mean by flexibility is more from a user experience standpoint, not necessarily quality of coffee. So uh, for example, this is a dial that goes from one to 12, your espresso range is gonna be on the dial and your pour over range is gonna be on the dial. Whereas for something like a monolith max, monolith flat, if you try to grind for pour over, 
your actual grind setting is going to be off the specified numbers and that could be and that's why people buy stickers or you get a sharpie and you mark it uh, so from a user perspective that might not be as appealing to you whereas if you really want to just look at numbers or you don't want to mark things uh, a commercial grinder will offer you that flexibility this is like a super small nitpick I don't really think it's that big of an issue, but I thought I wanted to note that. So those are kind of the brief grinder properties that I think are really appealing for those of you who are looking for maybe that next grinder upgrade. But another thing I really would like some of you guys to consider is actually the availability of these grinders. Now it is notoriously known that currently in the landscape of buying high-end coffee grinders, you, you can't get them. Nothing's in stock, you have to wait six to 12 months. Um, and, and that's not really the case with a lot of these high-end commercial grinders. For example, you can readily buy an EK43 from Prima Coffee. You can readily buy uh, something like the Eureka uh, Olympus series. Like you can just buy these grinders today. So why does it actually matter that you can readily buy? Well, in my opinion, I think it's pretty nice to actually have that middleman wholesaler simply because if anything goes wrong with your grinder, you'll probably have a warranty, you'll be taken care of, there will actually be a customer service team that will take care of you. In addition to that, some of those wholesalers that you buy through will be able to actually repair your grinder. Say you buy a grinder and something goes wrong. You can call them up, you can email them, they'll get a part sent out to you, or you send your grinder back to them and you get, you'll get taken care of. This could also be said of some of the more enthusiast home grinders that you can buy through those retailers. But here's the thing you might not get that type of support if you buy through a company like Weber Workshops. Now, I'm not here to knock on Weber, but we've seen on the forums and we've seen people spend thousands of dollars just to be told, too bad, it's your fault, and you don't get taken care of as a customer who just spent thousands of dollars. Now, if you were going to spend thousands of dollars on a grinder, I definitely would push you towards considering getting a grinder that you can confidently get support for, especially on the customer service end, if anything breaks. Now that kind of really covers most of the benefits of going commercial. These are awesome grinders, but let's talk about the downsides because uh, there are a lot of downsides with commercial grinders at home. Now, the very first thing is actually related to that grind speed is, well, these are loud. All right, here is 20-ish grams. So here is the lab suite, no, no beans. Not too loud, going to put in 20 grams. This is a V60 grind or pour over grind. So that was super fast, uh, but as you can see, there's definitely some chaff here. And uh, don't know if you can see that, but look at this. But really fast grind, no RDT by the way. Because they grind so fast and generally speaking, they're large flatbread grinders, it's not the cleanest experience. These aren't really designed for single dosing. So you'll generally get retention of some sort. If this is an exception in my opinion to the rule, uh, most of these commercial grinders are not really meant for single dosing and you're you're gonna get maybe up to five grams sometimes of retention. So that's something you, you'll need to consider. Uh, although with something like the Olympus and EK, you can totally mod those and you can add bellows, you can add, you know, Mr. Puff and all of those types of things to mitigate uh, the retention. But I just really wanted to note that. Now, another big problem with commercial grinders is the size. So this is again, I had one of the smaller commercial grinders out there, but look how big this thing is. Not only is it huge, it is also incredibly heavy. So this is about 60, 50 to 60 pounds uh, for one of these. And with um, other commercial grinders such as the EK43S or even EK43, for example, is they have feet that stick really far out because they're designed to just sit there in a cafe forever. So you should really consider the size and space for these commercial grinders. Aside from that, really, the only other downsides with commercial grinders is 
basically they're incredibly spartan they're just designed to turn off and on uh, you can definitely get into the adjustments and if you really want to spend some money you can get stuff that you can get grinder commercial grinders that have like iot you can get grinders that have displays but for example monolith max and levercraft ultra all offer rpm adjustments rpm profiling those are things that you may want to explore uh, you kind of don't really have those options with on and off that's kind of it when it comes to commercial grinders is at the end of the day they still are really amazing grinders but there are a lot of downsides with them in terms of usability so mainly the size the messiness of them and the noise but if you can put up with that then i think there's a very compelling case to consider one of these it's really cool with them is still the grind speed so i actually think it's very very appealing to have another grinder just on the bench dedicated just to filter coffee for example i uh, will make a vid i'll make a dedicated video about the lab suite but i love this thing for filter the these 80 millimeter burrs are, are pretty magical as a lot of people have been saying and they're also absolutely amazing for, for espresso but um it's pretty nice to just be able to have another grinder and it's another grinder that you didn't have to basically wait a year for because i know a lot of you guys miss out on the pre-orders and it's pretty nice to just be able to kind of get another grinder at a lower price point but with the same or similar burrs it'll maybe even have a burr set that you're really looking for so i actually really like that use case of just run a commercial grinder like the lab suite next to something like a monolith or a eg1 or a lag mp100 those are my takeaways of commercial grinders at home i'll be doing a dedicated video about the lab suite because i actually just i really like this thing this is an awesome grinder and it kind of fringes more towards the home space in my opinion but Generally speaking, commercial grinders are amazing when it comes to the quality of coffee. There are just a lot of downsides when it comes to the usability. 